Hey everybody, Brian Fouts here. And once again, we're back with Ted Thomas talking about tax certificates, tax deeds, and how you can build wealth using this strategy. So uh, Ted, welcome back. By the way, before we get into all the questions, kind of do a quick review, uh, a, you know, overview of what tax certificates are. Okay, folks, all the properties in the United States are, and in Canada uh, are taxable. All right, so that's called a property tax and you probably have a house so you have to pay property tax. All right, now half of the states, if you don't pay your property tax, they'll send you a default notice and they'll say, we're going to confiscate your property. In other words, if you didn't pay your tax, they're going to take your property, they're going to sell it at a, a public auction, and then they're going to have enough money to pay the tax. Okay, that's what they're going to do. All right, the other half of the states are benevolent states, like Florida is a benevolent state and a few others like that. Now, those states, what they do is they issue what's called a tax lien certificate, which is just a piece of paper like this. I'm holding one up. That's a tax lien certificate. Now, now, when they issue a tax certificate, anybody can pay your tax then. So when you come in to pay your tax, you're going to have to pay the tax and a penalty. Florida penalty is up to 18%. Other states like Iowa, it's all the way up to 24%. So when they come in to pay, they're going to have to pay the tax, which you would expect, and the 24%. The investor gets the 24%. So these are two ways to make money. You can make it by buying defaulted property or you could buy tax lien certificates. So hope I, I I was clear on that. In both cases, the mortgage or deed of trust is wiped out. Whenever they have a tax auction, it wipes out the mortgage or the deed of trust. So if this concept and this strategy is you know is so lucrative, uh, how can people like brokers or agents haven't like told me about this when I first got into real estate? Well, the challenge is the brokers. Um, uh, they, they don't talk about this because what, what a broker's job is, is to help you buy and sell. And that's how they're, they're just commission people. We're educators and we're just teaching you about a government system. This government system was invented 200 years ago. I didn't invent it. I just learned how to do it 30 years ago. And then I've just been developing uh, learning systems all those years. I have video learning systems. I have teachers. I have people to take people to auctions. We have basic courses. Matter of fact, uh, I'm going to invite all of you to come to a basic course. I do one every two weeks. And guess what? You can stay with us from 11 in the morning through to 5 in the afternoon, and you'll learn all the nitty-gritty details, and I only charge $47 for it. So if you want to learn this business, we give you every nitty-gritty, and I'll introduce you to people that are actually doing it. So the brokers, they're interested in buying and selling property, and so most of them don't even know about this business. Gotcha. Makes sense. Okay. So another uh, question I get, because I have most of my clients, by the way, are in the U.S. or Canada. But what about for people that are outside the U.S., like people that are in Canada or the U.K.? Can they still do this concept here in the U.S.? OK, you can do this, uh, this business any place where you can have a USA bank account. So we have dozens and dozens of clients. And I'm going to show you a client that is in, in a place called Regina, spelled with an R, Regina, Saskatchewan. All right, now that's the capital of that big province, okay? Now, he um, was in the real estate business for many years. He was in the rental business, and every time the market crashed, he would lose a few rental properties because the mortgage was so high, people didn't pay the rent and so on. So he wanted to get in a, you see, the beauty of the tax default of business is safe and secure, all right? Every investment you make in a tax certificate is secured by the real estate. If you don't get paid on a tax certificate, you're going to get the property. And if you go to a tax default auction, if you bid and win, you're going to get the property. So don't bid too high. So I taught him to buy just residential property to start with. He did it all online. The first one he bought, well, I'm going to just show you a little video on it. The first one he bought, he only spent pennies on it. The property was a residential property, had a value of 200000 And, well, just listen to this video and watch it. It's really exciting. My name is Kelly Osmack and I'm from Regina, Saskatchewan. I'm a Ted Thomas student. I had purchased a, a lot in Riverside County at Riverside. Uh, I purchased it for $35,000 and uh, after I got my title I listed it. It was listed for a month and I got a full cash offer of $55,000 US. After that deal I went to the uh, Kitsap County in Washington and purchased a five acre parcel. Um, in uh, Kingston and I paid 131000 for that property 
Uh, it's, it was a, had a 1,300 square foot uh, manufactured home and a barn on the property. Really nice property. I had it listed at 280 and I received a full price offer in four days. Well, there you have it. He did all that, all of that he did online. And from there, he went to doing what you're going to see right now. I went back to Riverside because it's a great place. I love Riverside for whatever reason. In May, I bought another property. It's another. It's in Desert Hot Springs. It's uh, another five-acre parcel. It's it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It's. I I bought this property. Wow. For one hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars, five acres of land. I, on Zillow, they had it listed in, in 2011 for $798,000. There's this house, there's, there's a, another 900 square foot nanny mother-in-law house, there's outbuildings, it's a beautiful property. I had a realtor go look at it and he said, yeah, it's, it's in, like from the exterior, it looks like it's in decent shape depending what the inside is. He said it could range for anywhere from you know 500 to 800. I'll probably clear 100,000 US on that deal. I've never left my basement office. Ever. <laughs> All right, so now I'm showing you a couple of examples. That was someone that he's outside of the country. He's making himself over $100,000 on some of those properties. Over 100,000. Never left his basement office. You heard him say it. I love that. It's very cool. So let me ask you another question. So we, we, you've mentioned tax certificates and tax deeds. So if someone's looking to get started and, you know, depending on what state they're in, if that's, if it's a default property or a state or a lien state, what should they get started with? I tell people to start small and learn how to do it. And the reason I say that is this, this is a, a business of abundance. Every state's doing this. There's 5,000 tax auctions every year. It's been going on for 200 years. So it's never going away. So buy a small tax lien Wait for it to mature and get paid. All right, so now you can do that online. We'll teach you how to do that online. Or buy a residential vacant lot. You see, everybody that you and I know, they want to buy houses. So at the auction sometime, people have a tendency to push the prices up. Right. So I say, buy a residential lot because everybody just says, oh, I don't want one of those residential lots. I don't care about that. So a residential lot, like I just showed you on the video, that lot was worth $200,000. He bought it for pennies, and he sold it and made $20,000. You see, there was a lot of margin in the, those, those lots. So about 25% of every auction is residential, residential or, or land. Not residential, but land. A lot of, a lot of land deals people don't even want to look at because they're used to houses. See, real estate investors, they know houses. They don't know land. But you can buy land for pennies, absolutely pennies. And what's the risk? You don't have to worry about squatters in there. You don't have to worry about the place burning down. You don't have to worry about hurricanes. You don't have to worry about any of that. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. yeah so obviously that they answered that question of, you know, should you buy big, buy small, start small, and then go from there. And then yeah. we also talked about, yes, you can do these things online, but there's also the ones where you can go in person, like uh, some of the, some of your clients have done. I've done it before too. And right. You know, those auctions are fine. Sometimes there's 100 people. If there's 100 people, it's so hard to get a property, to be honest, because there's so many people vying and bidding and bidding them up. And so I've had the best success when there's only a handful of people. But what's kind of been your experience, Ted, on that? Uh, it's the same as yours uh, at the big auctions, because uh, an auction is kind of a, a, a signal flag that's waving out there for people. This is going to be a deal. And a lot of people... Mm -hmm. Never get trained. So if you go to an auction, there'll be a lot of people there, but only 20% or so are going to bid. But you see, if you're in a room and you're in a room and the guy down the street is bidding against you, he's buying, trying to buy that property to move his family in. He wants to move it. So he's just going to keep bidding up. He's going to beat you. All right. So a lot of people that haven't had any experience, they're going to keep bidding, bidding, bidding. All right. So it's going to get too high. So more than likely, I'm going to guess that you did this. If you go to some of the smaller auctions, there's going to be a few local people there. Might not be so much money in the room. Now, let me show you an auction. This is a, an auction we'll talk about a lot before we're done on this, this series. This is an auction in Los Angeles. They'll have a couple of these a year. Uh, they'll have one online, and then they'll have another one that's, that's uh, actual. This actual auction had more than 1,500 properties, had more than that, and there was about 1,000 people in the room. 
So that was really a busy, busy auction, and people keep bidding them up. So I tell you, to, if you're going to go to those, I'll train you, and you're going to go to those auctions, about 20 to 20% 20 of the properties won't sell, but they'll have an auction the next day. When they have the auction the next day, the price might be starting bid $100. Nobody mm -hmm. will ever tell you that. But I'm going to tell you right now, when the second bid comes up, the auctioneer will probably say, the second day comes up, that we're lowering the price or we're cutting the tax in half. So it's it's what you know. It's, it's just like everything else. You don't know what you don't know, but we know a lot about it because we've been doing it for 30 years. Makes sense. And so that kind of answers that question. I think of, you know, should you go to a big city or a small city or a large county or a small county? Um, the large ones are probably going to have more competition, more people there. But even if that's the case, if you know how it works, you can still benefit because of the, the second day that you talked about. And then, of course, the small ones are going to have just generally less people. Um, and so there's, there's there's pros and cons to both, it sounds like, right? Right, right. Okay. Yeah, uh, mo most people uh, do better if they start with a smaller auction. But if you're in a place like California, like Southern California, Los Angeles, um, even if you went to San Diego County, you would find as many as three or 400 properties at an auction. Or a place mm -hmm. like Riverside County, which is kind of in between mm -hmm. the two, uh, it's not unusual for 250 properties. Even, wow. at, even in upstate New York, uh, Albany will have 125, 150 properties every auction. Wow, that's a lot. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's um, yeah. And so obviously there's there's an, an incredible amount of these certificates available. There's no maximum number of these, right? Each each county in the United States is an individual taxing uh, county. So it's individual. We, they call it a jurisdiction. And so they pretty much can do what they want. The, the state mandates that they have an auction, uh, but they can hold the auction anytime they want, and they can do multiple auctions. So it's best that people learn how, and we teach them how, we teach them how to research all this online. So you don't have to leave home and you can actually get an auction list. So you can stay at home and tap in and get the auction list. And then we teach you how to look at the properties using the satellite and using the county records. We teach all that. Very cool. All right. Um, I have a note here. You said something about Georgia, like the minimum payment, like 20%. What was, what did you mean by that? Well, Georgia is a favorite state of mine. I live in Florida, but Georgia, they have a regular auction where they sell the property. Now, when they sell the property, they're going to sell it with a deed. They're going to they're gonna send the deed. to. So the person that buys it gets the deed. But the deed in Georgia has a, a little statement down at the bottom of that it's a redeemable deed. Now, a redeemable means that you bought the deed so that person in default can still redeem it so they can come back in and get their deed. Mm. So anytime in the first year, if that client, that person that lost the property, anytime in the first year, if they come back, now you're going to like what I'm going to say. Believe me, you're going to like it. All right. But they come back in that year, they can buy it back from you for whatever you paid, you got your money back, and they have to pay you a 20% penalty on the first 365 days. If they wait till the second year, they have to give you a 30% penalty. Wow. Wow, that's cashola in the bank. Now in Georgia, they have 169 counties. That means there's 169 auctions. You don't have enough life to have to go to just the auctions in Georgia. And they have one the first Tuesday of every month. First Tuesday in the month. The only other state that even compares with it is Texas. So it's, it's amazing. It's a redeemable deed state. There's five of those in the United States. We teach that. We have, I have one guy that's done over 100 deals just in Georgia. And when I do a three-day class, which we'll invite people to, when I do the three-day class, he teaches people how to do it. Right there in the room, they teach them how to do it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool. Well, uh, we'll uh, we'll continue this section this session in the next video, guys. Um, these are some amazing questions. So, Ted, once again, thank you for the uh, this information because this is kind of mind blowing what is possible. And unfortunately, a lot of people don't know about this. So, uh, thank you for sharing. This is amazing. Okay, great. Now, folks, you can go below me and you can register if you like. I do a class once every two weeks. It's forty seven dollars to come to that class, and it lasts all day. If you don't get your forty seven bucks worth, don't worry. Just send me a note and I'll give you your money back. But you'll really, this is a really a powerful class. Took me a long time to put it together. We have breakfast together. We have lunch together. It goes all that time. We're just going to give you a constant content and I'll show you real people doing it.